Next, let's talk about our Pro products. Earlier this year, we announced M2 Pro and M2 Max, along with the new MacBook Pro and Mac Mini. And users have been amazed by their performance. Mac Pro? Well, now we have even more exciting news for pros, starting with Mac Studio. Oh, come on. Introduced last year, Mac Studio is an entirely new... You know, I definitely didn't see this coming. Well, maybe I did, but I don't know. If you found this video by it being suggested, I do all things related to Apple, the good and the bad. If that sounds like your thing, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And when you do, ring that notification bell so you won't miss my next video when I post it. Thank you. Since buying the M1 Studio last July, the rumors started immediately how the studio was going to get the M2 in 2023. Then, no, they're, they're not gonna update it. And then of course, the whole thing was canceled and we would never see a new Mac Studio ever. Of course, I start reading, ah, not only is it not canceled, they're gonna go ahead and update it in 2023 with the M2 chip. Naively, I took the stance of, how could Apple update a machine that was just updated to give it the M2 chip? Chip. The MacBooks got the M2 chip, and while it was good for people that didn't have the M1, this was good until they compared it to the M1, and they weren't so impressed. Many people were buying M1 MacBooks instead of the M2. A spec bump, as opposed to waiting for something that was a little bit more meaningful in an update. But here we are. If you missed my last video about me using the M1 Mac Studio for the past year, I'll go ahead and post that link in the description. Just to get you up to speed, this is my M1 Mac Studio. It's got the Ultra chip with a 20 core CPU, 48 core GPU, 32 core neural engine, more on that in a second, four terabyte SSD, yes, I know that's a lot, and 128 gigs of RAM. I loaded this machine so it could do everything that I needed right now, and it would be future-proof so I didn't have to worry about it keeping up for years to come. This machine was not cheap, costing me about 6,300 bucks with Apple Care out the door. Now, if you're watching this video currently and you already have an M1 Mac Studio, just wish you would step back from that ledge, my friend. I have some advice about that in a minute. But first, I really paid attention to what they were saying in the keynote, and it just makes me all that much more angry. Introduced last year, Mac Studio is an entirely new product designed specifically for pros. How can you say this product is built for the pros, then a year later you replace it like you're replacing an iPhone? Users have been astonished by what they can do with it, and satisfaction is through the roof. Satisfaction through the roof? Come on. Don't bullshit a bullshitter. If it really sold that well, you wouldn't be updating it this year just to get more people to buy it. Look, I, I get it. It's a new chip. Opportunity to make more money. Money is business. Business is money, Mike. Deal with it. But come on. So does that mean we're gonna get an updated Mac Studio every year now? Is it gonna be just like the iPhone, Apple Watch, and it's bad enough that it's the MacBook Pros? Okay, you know what? Now that I said it out loud, I, I kind of feel a little bit better. So let's take a step back. I wanna answer a question that I've been getting a few times already since the keynote. Am I selling my M1 Mac Studio? <laughs> This machine is just fine. Let's break down why. To compare this big improvement in performance, let's go ahead and take a look at MacBook Pro's update to the M2 Max chip. Since this is the exact same chip we're seeing in the Mac Studio, what were the improvements? I heard stats from Apple like 20% faster CPU, 30% faster GPU, 40% faster Neural Engine? The 32 core Neural Engine is 40% faster. M1 Ultra has 32 powerful neural engine cores. 20, 30, 40% faster. Doing what exactly? Show me the tasks. Show you the money. I rewatched several videos comparing the MacBook Pro M1 Max to the M2 Max and this is what I learned. The statistics Apple listed, which they always do, are in a perfect environment. But in the real world, not as impressive. Most of these videos showed everyday tasks that take seconds to a few minutes. Something that took 30 seconds on the M1 took 22 seconds on the M2. There's your 30% faster on the new machine. Hmm, yeah, not, not so great now, huh? Other tests showed that the new M2 machine ran hotter. Even the SSD performance declined 
on the smaller drives due to Apple clearly changing the setups probably to save money. Now, is that worth it to me to update my current machine and probably lose a ton of money in the process? No, I don't think it's worth it for me to upgrade and I don't think you should either. However, do you think it is or isn't worth it? Go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know why. What I'm trying to say to everyone watching this video comes down to two things. Number one, if you bought the M1 Mac Studio with any spec, and think it's time to kick it down the road because the M2 is better? Never go by what Apple states in their keynotes. Wait till you see some reviews come in, and then I can say with almost certainty that it's really not gonna be worth the upgrade. Number two, for those who were considering buying the M1 Studio based on my advice, but you may have waited, now is a great time to go look at Apple's refer page and see what those discounts are for the M1 Mac Studio. I looked and there's already some pretty good deals on there and you could save some serious money or look for someone selling their M1 Mac Studio and you'll probably get it for a lot less. Or maybe you have the budget for an M2 version. Well, then I say go for it. However, if Apple decides to improve this machine again next year, you're not gonna need to upgrade. So just remember this video. Now, I also have two crazy theories about this. Number one, Apple didn't get to do what they wanted with the M1 Mac Studio. So here they are trying to remedy that. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't believe that one either. Number two, they didn't get the sales they wanted. So in order to keep it fresh, they threw the usual standard upgrade and try to do this whole marketing thing saying that it's 20, 30, 40% better. Now, one way to look at this is you can see them mentioned in the presentation comparing the M2 to Intel base spec machines to get impressive numbers. Hey guys, it's been a few years since you use those. How about we just put that to rest and just stick with the M1 comparison, but you're not gonna get the better numbers, so you're not gonna see it. Of course, I love to bring this up again, the issue with the M2 SSDs being considerably slower on the 256 and what you would see in the Mac Studios, the 512 gigabyte versions. Now, if you're watching this video and you're like, Mike, look, the Mac Studio just isn't for me. It's too expensive. Ah, I got a playlist right here of the M1 and M2 Mac Mini and you could save a ton of money doing that too. Of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you won't miss my next video when I post it. See ya.